William Wallace was born in turbulent Scotland. Around the year 1270, he became a symbol of resistance and trust. In a time tormented by persecution and within the resolute look for autonomy, his presence was interwoven with incredible fights, intrepid authority, and a conclusion stamped by catastrophe. Proceeds to reverberate through the pages of Scottish history and culture as an interminable update on the unwavering struggle for flexibility. Raised in a family of lower respectability within the region of senior citizens Wallace, he found himself early within the center of a world writhed by debate. For the personality and predetermination of Scotland, his childhood and youth were going through in a nation where the winds of disobedience were starting to blow emphatically against English mastery, this scene of contrasts and clashes, where the independence of his country hung by a string. The breeding ground in which the character of Wallace was manufactured. Even though he had gotten an instruction that separated him from his counterparts, what formed Wallace was the fervor and enthusiasm for his country that saturated his environment. His knowledge of Latin was more than an insignificant sign. Of course, it got to be a window to a more extensive world, permitting him to get to thoughts and techniques that would afterward demonstrate significance in his battle for Scotland's flexibility. This phonetic capacity, unordinary within the minor respectability of his time, gave him an advantage in strategy and communication, essential instruments for an incipient pioneer with the startling passing of Lord Alexander I. The position of royalty of Scotland was wrapped in a cover of instability that, as it were compounded with the enthronement of John Balliol, this sensitive transition was the start that lit the intertwine of the intervention by Lord Edward of Britain. A ruler with expansionist cravings and a royal vision for Scottish sway. This tense alteration of control shook the exceptional centre of William Wallace, a nationalist whose soul seemed not to endure seeing that his nation was subjected to any outside crown and the blood would begin to bubble in him in 1297. Here Wallace with the tricky of a fox and the strength of a lion, executed an act of rebellion that would be recollected over the long time the kill of the English sheriff. This activity was not just an individual quarrel, it was a strong explanation, an unmistakable message that Scotland would not compliantly yield. To begin with, the resistance of Wallace was the flare-up of Scottish wrath, a cry for flexibility that declared the storm that was to come, but it was at Stirling Bridge that the legend of Wallace was chiseled into the stone of history in that September 1297, technique and valour interwoven in a dangerous move Wallace, beside Andrew Murray not only confronted a numerically prevalent English armed force but also opposed all the traditions of war with strategic insights. That gave a false representation of his youth. Wallace took advantage of Stirling's limit bridge like a pipe, disturbing the numerical advantage of the foe and utilizing geology itself. As their most impressive partner, the Scots, with the quality of franticness and the order of equity, in their hearts jumped on the English in a hurricane of steel, and wrath the Scottish triumph was not as it were a military deed of epic extents but was moreover a show of the control of administration, and will it was a triumph, that not as it were broke the English positions but too broken the myth of their invulnerability. The triumph at Stirling Bridge was more than a military triumph, it was a structural move within the battle for Scottish autonomy, lifting Wallace from a revolt pioneer to a national symbol. 
A nearly legendary legend within the hearts of his people, the legend of Wallace forged in wrath and the fire of fight, got to be the pennant beneath which Scotland would proceed its ceaseless battle for self-determination. Its name became synonymous with opportunity, and its soul got to be the eternal flame that burns within the soul of each Scot who dreams of a free country. The reverberate of triumph. At Stirling Bridge was still remembered when William Wallace was contributed as gatekeeper of Scotland with this title came under control, which expanded his influence beyond the war zone, giving him a voice within the political fate of his country. He embraced an arrangement of striking strikes into the English domain, bringing the war to the enemy's doorstep and giving rest to their attacked arrival. These strikes were not acts of resistance but key signs to unbalance the English crown and illustrate that Scotland was not however vanquished but destiny, just like the north wind can alter quickly at the fight of Falkirk in 1298. Scottish inventiveness and colliding with the English war machine in its crudest expression refined English strategies and their armed force with an area of long-range bowmen crushed the Scottish strengths with efficiency and brutality. The vanquish was serious, a deep wound to the pride and soul of the Scots, and a turning point within the Wallace resistance. After the lamentable fight of Falkirk, Wallace distant, from being broken by overcome, abandoned the guardian crown and blurred his absence. Within the puzzle of the thick woodlands of Scotland, between the fog and the greenery, the spectre of resistance got to be a shadow that materialised as it were to convey precise blows to the English intruder. With an arrangement of loyal followers, he carried out a guerrilla campaign that was just like the wind, incomprehensible to capture and obliterating in its effect. His assaults were sparks of disobedience that lit the heart of Scotland once more and once more within the obscurity of occupation. In any case, in 1305, Wallace's fortunes were obscured as a setting sun was deceived. Captured and chained a lion torn from its wilderness, dwelling place, and shown in the lanes of London. There was no justice in his trial, it was a joke, a theatre of pitilessness, where Edward, to begin with, looked to pulverise Scottish ethical quality blamed on a tall conspiracy. Wallace went up against his captors with the head held up, looking disobedient without appearing to be an iota of lament or fear. Eminent 23, 1305, marked not only the conclusion of William Wallace's battle but also the start of his endlessness as an image of the Scottish battle. On that day, Wallace confronted his final predetermination. With bravery that cleared out a permanent mark on history and within the hearts of its individuals. Without question, the details of its conclusion are realistic and aggravating. Even though it is important to keep in mind with regard and respect, the basic thing is that how Wallace faced his predetermination could be a confirmation of his faithful commitment to the opportunity of Scotland. The purpose of his captors was Clara, they needed to send a message of discouragement to those who challenged him to take after in his strides. Be that as it may, the result was the inverse the memory of Wallace did not blur into the shadow of fear, in other words, his boldness and giving became a reference point of trust and flexibility for the Scottish country. Rather than fear, his bequest propelled eras of Scots to proceed, battling for their right to self-determination through the centuries. Wallace has been remembered not for the catastrophe of his conclusion but for the enthusiasm and strength of his character, his cherishing for Scotland, 
and his assurance to live free or pass on. Trying his bequest lives on empowering individuals around the world to remain firm in their convictions and to battle for their standards with boldness and honor. Eminent 23 is a date not only to remember the conclusion of a man's life, but also to celebrate the unyielding spirit that he has spoken to, which proceeds to inspire humankind to look for.